All right, so you out here, you trying to make you some money, you trying to grow your business, and you thinking, man, like, how can I grow this? How can I make this bigger? How can I make me some more money, man? Well, I'm going to share those tips with you today on how you can grow and expand your photo, video, graphic design, any type of creative business. Let's jump into it right now. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Jonathan Moore and on today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can grow and scale your photo, video, graphic design, any type of creative small business that you have. I'm going to be sharing these three tips with you that you can take, look at your business, and then start implementing a plan from there. All right, so how do you grow and you scale? Especially like if you're like a one-man band, right? Mm. That could be tough, right? Because you know that the more business that you get in, the busier that you get, right? The more swamped in the back end work that you gotta do, right? So not only are you taking the pictures or you're doing the videos, now you're editing, you're post, you're managing, you're distributing, all these other things that be coming in to the mix and it's like, damn, I need a break. And what happens is, is we can get trapped in our own businesses, right? So you might think that starting a business is this whole grandiose thing and you're working on your own and you got your own schedule, which yeah, of course you actually do have your own schedule. You get to make your own rules and everything else. But man, depending on how you're running your operation, you might get swamped in that work. So I'm going to show you how you can free up some time and grow your company at the same time. So let's jump into it. All right, guys, so I'm not gonna lie. This isn't one of those like quick overnight type of things. You're gonna have to take some time and identify the process. But once you have the prototype in place, you can then take it and you can scale it and you can grow it. And this is how you really do it. Let me show you, this is how it really breaks down. So step number one, you have to identify the jobs in your business. And now when I say identify the jobs, right? You may think like, oh, well, you know, I'm the one who's shooting or it's just me and somebody else is helping me. but <clears throat> excuse me, you have to identify all the jobs in your business. So what does that look like? So you might have a photographer, right? You might have a photographer, you might have a videographer. Sometimes they might be the same person. Sometimes they might be, you know, somebody, one person does this, one person does that. Sometimes they do both, okay? Next thing you might have is you might have an editor, right? So you're going to need somebody to touch up the photos. You're going to need somebody to cut and stitch the videos together. Now, sometimes this might be the same person, the person who does photo or video. They probably know how to edit as well, too. But even so, each process is really a job. So you have a photographer or a videographer or you have a graphic designer, right? You have an editor. Maybe that's put that, right? So you have a graphic designer. <clears throat> so maybe this person is designing you know, flyers, they're designing print work, maybe they're designing YouTube thumbnails, right? So that's that's gonna be under the job of a graphic designer. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do all of these things, but think about it. If you're a one man band, right? Or a one woman band, depending on who's watching this, no disrespect, yo, this just means you solo, right? If you solo, okay, you're doing all these jobs. You're the photographer, you're the videographer, <clears throat> you're the editor, you're the graphic designer, right? You're the writer, and you gotta write content, right? You're the account manager, you're the own, you're, you're your own manager. You're your own manager and your own boss, right? So that's another job all the way up here because you gotta manage all of this junk, right? So now you're a manager as well too. So you're the manager, you're the videographer, the photographer, the editor, the graphic designer, the copywriter, the account manager, you're posting, you're distributing, blah, blah, blah. You're doing it all, baby. So once you figure out all of the jobs that you have to do within your business, and keep in mind, these are everything else, right? This is not just the technical stuff. This is the marketing, right? You have somebody who markets, which is probably you. You market yourself, right? You have, uh, you know, client, you know, development, right? You have you have to keep in contact with your client. You have to nurture those relationships. These are all different types of jobs and you have to focus on your profit producing activity. So that's another job. Now, one of the reasons it's important to identify all these jobs, okay, is because you want to get to a point where you make a standard product, okay? And your product can be whatever you make. It could be videos, it could be photos, it could be flyers. Whatever the case may be, you want it to be somewhat standard, right? All of this stuff falls into the category, you know, of what we do, okay? So I'm put 
what we do, and not only what we do, but how we do it. Check this, what we do and how we do, okay? What we do and how we do, McDonald's, Burger King, right? Burger King, flame broil, whatever, right? McDonald's, we're using a flat top. Burger King, we offer Whoppers. McDonald's, we offer Big Macs, okay? This is what we do, and this is how we do it, right? So if you come over here, and you looking for a Big Mac, but this is Burger King, understand, we don't have that. We got the Whopper, okay? And this is how we do what we do with the Whopper. You feel what I'm saying? Okay? So you need to identify what it is that you do and how you do what you do, because you're gonna wanna teach other people how to do what you do. So step number two is you have to identify your system, okay? And this, you might've heard of like, say a flow chart. So let's say you got a flow chart, which means that, you know, from beginning to end, right, you have these different steps or these different phases of your project. So this is completion, right? This is the project is done and it's ready to go. So you have, you know, step one, two, and three, okay? And when you have a standard product, now let me show you why having a standard product comes in so handy because the standard product is going to be the same basically every time yeah there might be a couple of variations so let's go back to the whopper analogy right so let's say i want a whopper and a whopper looks like this whatever this looks like okay the whopper i don't know what the whopper has but it looks like this okay now you might say uh, i want a whopper but i don't want onions on it not a problem you're still going to get basically a whopper you just might not have onions on it you might say, I want one with extra pickles. Not a problem. You're still gonna get a Whopper. It just might have a couple extra pickles on it, okay? But the main thing is you're still getting a Whopper and that's why you wanna make a standard product because now you have a flow, right? So you know every time that you get a job, right? Or some type of work in that relates to how you do, what you do, right? The way that you do it, Okay, you know that you got a system already put in place. It goes through systems one, two, three. It's basically a checklist, right? It's a checklist. Check, okay, check, okay, check. And once we have all three of those checked off, we know we have our product completed. Whew, I ain't gonna lie, man. This is a lot, but this is actually the way that it's done, man. And you know what? Think about it. Look at franchises all over the place, right? You look at franchises like McDonald's, you look at something like Burger King, Chipotle. I, I'm, I don't know why I keep using food references, okay? But anything like that, right? You don't learn how to, if, if you were to open up, let's say a McDonald's, right? They're like the easiest to pick. If you were to open up a McDonald's, you don't learn how to cook burgers, right? You learn how to run a McDonald's, right? And so what we're doing now is we're moving away from cooking burgers, okay? Because we're cooking burgers, we're making fries and milkshakes and everything else. We're taking the orders, we're cooking the burgers, we're taking the fries, the milkshakes, we're sweeping it up after we're all said and done, right? This is all this right here, right? All this jazz up in here, right? That's the burgers, that's the fries. The, we're making all of that right now, okay? But we want to get to the point where we just run all of this as opposed to doing all of this, right? You heard the concept of working on your business and not in your business, right? Working on your business is figuring out a way to take all of these things here and grow the business, okay? Working in the business is just doing all of these things here, right? Just doing these things and not actually growing the business. So, I had that ass too. Okay, step number three, the last and final step is you wanna duplicate. Okay, duplicate, repeat, and scale, right? That's basically it, man. Excuse my sloppy handwriting, but duplicate, repeat, and scale, right? Once you have your standard product, so you have product A, and it doesn't have to be one thing. You, you can have a couple of things. You can have product A, B, and C, right? C could be a triangle. Okay, and you might have the product D, that's a circle. Okay, whatever the case may be, all right? But you have basically your standards, right? These are your standard products that you're gonna be offering, right? Whatever that is, okay? Now, 
you identify the jobs that it takes to put together these products, right? You identify the system or the process, right? That's your flow chart, your checklist, right? You gotta do one, two, three steps to get product A. You gotta do steps one, two, four, seven, I don't know, to get product B, right? But these are your checklists. This is standard. Basically, every time you get a new product, you get a new client, and you're gonna fulfill their, you know, whatever it is that you're fulfilling with for them, right? You're servicing them. Your services are gonna be somewhat standard, okay? And this could be the tough part for creatives because creatives, you know, they always wanna make something like this and they wanna, you know, they wanna do something new and trust me, I understand. You know, I always see new things that inspire me all the time. That's a separate conversation right now because we're talking about how to grow and scale your business we're not talking about the things that you're you know doing in it so that's a separate conversation but that can be tough right if i say to a photographer or videographer yo bro you want to make your business like mcdonald's <sighs> you know how many people get offended over that right but that's not the point the point is is so that you can scale and grow the business right because it's like if mcdonald's works here it's probably going to work here and it's probably going to work here. So whether you're in New York or whether you're in LA, a Big Mac is a Big Mac, right? It's, it's all the same, but we can duplicate and scale and repeat it. Now, I understand if you're in this solo because a lot of this stuff is attached to your name. So I get it. So you want to have people who are going to create things that reflect your, your, your quality, your standards. Okay. But, However you make your system, you wanna make it easy so you can teach somebody quickly how to get in there, right? Because let me tell you something, if you lose somebody, right? Let's say you get this bad boy juiced up and it's firing and it's rolling and you lose somebody, okay? How quickly can you replace them, put them into the system, drop them into the system, right? You have a product, you have a new client that comes in, one week you go out or one month you go out and you score all kinds of new business, right? Now, if you're solo, it's awesome but it's also overwhelming because guess what? You're doing all of these things times however many new clients or however many new jobs you want, right? For that month or that year, or whatever that period of time, okay? But if you have a system, right? You got a system, you win some new business, you win some new clients, you drop it into the system, right? And you have people who can run this system for you. But the first thing that you have to do is you have to identify the jobs, you have to identify the system and you have to be able to duplicate, repeat and scale. Here's the tricky part, independent of you. Okay, so here's you and you're happy. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but that's you and you're happy because you just built all of this here. But guess what? We can't have you a part of it. Now, is that completely realistic? Um, it can be. Does that mean that you don't want to be a part of it? No, absolutely not. Because a lot of people build their business. They, they feel love for it, right? This thing is like a child. It has, it has life. It has legs. It, you know what I mean? So you're usually going to be involved in your business in some type of way. But all of this needs to be able to exist without you, right? All of this here, the system, the products, everything else needs to be able to be created without you, all right? So if you can do that, then you can scale your business and you can grow it. You can expand it, you can grow it. That's really how it's done, okay? So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If so, please give it a like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you guys think about it. Give me some of the strategies that you're using to grow and expand your business. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.